Excuse me. Hello? <laughs> Hello? Do you mind? Do you mind? I'm working. This week, I am going to keep things a little low key. Um, <laughs> last week was literally spent driving across the country and back again to spend time with my family. And the entire month and a half prior to that was spent in my office without coming out working between Winifred and my Haunted Mansion costumes. So since I need to use a different part of my brain this week, I am going to be making a Halloween parasol. Sort of, kind of, kind of, sort of like the ones that they sell at Disney World for little kids, but they're small and tiny. Well, I want a full-size mom one. A ma ma mom-sized parasol. So about a month ago, or so, the lovely Rachel Maxie made a pumpkin beach umbrella. <laughs> and then a few days later, I was walking around Magic Kingdom with my kiddo. We spent some time watching the parasol painters at the Magic Kingdom. And of course those parasols are only like yay big, they're like 40 bucks. So between the two concepts, like this idea of making myself a Halloween parasol kind of, took root in my brain. It has turned into an oak tree. And now all I can think about is making a Halloween parasol. Yes, we are downstairs today because prior to leaving for Virginia, I did not clean up after myself. My office still looks like the Haunted Mansion's attic. I promise. Lo and behold, I found myself umbrella shopping. I wasn't specific to what color umbrellas I purchased. My goal was the uh, SPF rating. They went into my shopping cart. The colors for me, I went with black and purple because I felt like I could keep my Haunted Mansion theme going. And so for the purple umbrella, I am going to attempt to paint the Haunted Mansion wallpaper print using this pumpkin jack-o'-lantern stencil. Stencil? Stencil? Stencil. Using this jack-o'-lantern stencil. I also have some black lace that I'm gonna put around the trim of the umbrella, some ultra flexible fabric adhesive, some wonder clips to hold those in place while they're drying, my craft brushes, and fabric paints. The fabric paint that I am personally gonna be using on the purple umbrella is the Tulip Soft Velvet. The reason that I'm going to use this is because um, I really want it to have that Victorian wallpaper-esque feel to it, which I'm going to get. I think I love, I've used the velvets before on a lot of other projects and they really do have a nice velvety finish to them. So that's going to be my goal to do. Let's get to it. I don't, I hope you guys can see that. I hope it's in focus. And then on the inside, it's just taped with some painter's tape. So what I'm gonna do is using the light of my window, I'm going to uh, trace this onto my umbrella. And then I'm gonna do it eight times. I can't see how this would actually work as a jack-o'-lantern. There's so many pieces. It's 
So the first layer is traced on. I mean, it's not perfect, but neither am I, so it's okay. I found that the um, stencil underneath kept shifting. That was my biggest issue, but I'm still happy with it. I think overall it'll be cool. All right, now I'm gonna do that a hundred more times. There is zero graceful way of doing this. At this point, I have all of my lines traced on and I'm gonna go back in and fill it all in with the black velveteen paint. I am only using craft brushes again because whenever I use fabric paint, um, it does bond with the synthetic bristles. So I only use inexpensive craft brushes to work on projects like this. Um, and I know in other projects I have watered down my fabric paint, but with this velveteen fabric paint, I'm not going to water it down because I don't want to lose the velveting effect at the end. But I am, however, going to just wet my brush in a little bit of water. And I'm just a hop into it kind of girl. Like, I am going to work, you know, left to right because I'm a righty and I don't want to schmear. That's really the only thing that I'm doing. So I'm starting at the furthest point left. If you're a lefty, by all means, work right to left. And then I'm just coloring in the lines just like you would a coloring book. Okay, uh, seven more times. Uh, uh. Okay, I've got this completely painted out. All eight panels are done. Um, to give you a time reference, it took me about one and a half Hallmark movies. I just plopped myself down, uh, put a movie on, and painted away in the most unladylike posture. Um, but uh, so the next step is to hit it with some heat. Now I know some of you might be cringing because adding heat to paint can cause color shift and is typically a no-no. However, with this specific paint, heat is what it needs to make it go from looking like a matte black to having the velvet texture. It'll actually puff up and get velvety. Um, I did have to get creative a little bit around 
the Velcro strap. And in doing so, I got a little bit of a splooge. But I'm not really worried about it. Um, but so far, so good. I'm happy with it so far. Uh, so I'm gonna try using my blow dryer. This does kick off some heat, and I do use it for shrink wrap, so I'm hoping it'll be enough heat for this. And I'm also going to try my um, heat gun, my embossing heat gun. So I'll try both, and I'll let you know which one I like better. Let's get to it. Okay, so far my blow dryer is not throwing off enough heat, so I'm switching to my heat gun. Final thoughts, I'm super happy with how um, it turned out. I might next time if I do something like this, I shouldn't say if, because I love it. Um, the next time I do something like this, uh, I'm gonna use a heat erase pen, so that way when I'm velveting, so that way when the flocking happens, um, the pen marks erase, I mean, from far away, you can't see them, even from like two, even from like a foot away, you cannot see any of the marks that I didn't fill in, but if you get up really, really close, they're there, they're obvious, um, but it's for me, I'm not selling it, I'm not, it's just something that I wanted, um, and I'm happy with it. So really that's, you know, that's what matters, you know. Um, in life, nothing has to be perfect and it's okay to have flaws. Uh, it's okay to have flaws in ourselves and it's okay to have flaws in our work. No one is perfect um, and I'm okay with the imperfections. I like, I actually like how the velvet is a little uneven and that comes from the fact that I didn't fully smooth out all of my paint. Um, so if that bothers you, that then making sure that your paint is smooth and even will give you a much more even finish in your finished velveting. Um, but for me, I kind of like it because it gives it 
that feeling that it's much older velvet wallpaper that might have been touched and rubbed and pieces are falling off and I kind of like it because it adds to the haunted mansion-iness of uh, the overall aesthetic. All right, I love you guys and I will see you next week.